is the last record that uh, so what i'm trying to say here is if you have these uh, in the gaze, so you have something like this uh, so if this is kenya here for k uh, you have uganda here you can have tanzania here uh, you have a country like somalia here uh, the region can be expounded uh, depending uh, so the question is uh, if the Nzigeza are here, huh? then the question is what is the probability that they will come here or they will go here or they will go there. Is that okay? So uh, this, there is some uncertainty in uh, being uh, uh, accurate or precise on the movement dynamics of uh, these uh, flies, uh, whether they'll head this way or they'll head that way or they'll head this way. But uh, that uh, uncertainty, uh, one can try to understand it and model it and predict it using a PDE because with a PDE, you can now look at this as a, a diffusion what? process. Uh, those of you doing physics, I'm sure you've looked at uh, uh, some diffusion kind of uh, dynamics. So if you choose to look at this as a diffusion process, then the predictions uh, you are going to make on whether this is swarm of insects, the so-called disease will head that way or will head this way or will head this way. You heard from Kenya, they expected them in Karamoja and they allocated resources. Mm -hmm. Then they said that the ones that were there, they were accountable. Maybe three came in Karamoja. How true that is, I don't know. So uh, a deterministic model would be, uh, yes, it could be used what you call an ODE, but then the results, one will have to take them through with uh, a lot of reservations. Uh, and of course, there are other things, like when you look at uh, uh, some of what we call the non-communicable diseases that we are discussing in the biomass, uh, a, a disease or an infection like a cancer, a cancerous tumor, uh, an ODE will not be perfect to, 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 to try to explain or unpack the dynamics of uh, some of these cancerous lesions. Why? Because if this is the body and you are looking at uh, uh, if, if this is the body and there is uh, a small patch here, some of you have had relatives who are suffering from a cancer, especially one that comes along with the lesions, eh? like a Kaposi sarcoma or what you call a Kisipi. Eh? Kisipi is HIV related, it is age related, it is uh, organ transplant related. The thing may start as a dot. You've seen uh, the ladies are very sensitive to these pimples, but it may start as a very small patch here and it enlarges and then it enlarges. I think you can see. Eh? So now an ODE cannot handle something like this because if it starts as a dot like that, if you see what I have circled here, then this dot enlarges, this is a patch and the patches grows bigger and then bigger then the question is uh, how big is this patch uh, likely to and then if this is the body it may start here is that okay then the next time it is somewhere here the next time it goes there the next time it is here the other there is this randomness which is probabilistic and uh, despite the fact that uh, this is a PDE, it can handle this kind of what? Because it is a network of patches now. So a PDE comes in. So I want you to appreciate the difference between a PDE and uh, uh, an ODE, firstly in theory, and then in the actual uh, practice or application. If it comes to application, how does it? 
are related. Uh, a PDE and a ODE can both be used for a same system and they give both accurate uh, systems. But the key difference is uh, with the ODE, ODE is uh, more tilted towards uh, a deterministic modeling approach. And I've emphasized that deterministic here means uh, uh, quite a number of the input data, uh, you are quite certain about it. Uh, when you become so uncertain about some of the inputs and the variables you are going to use or handle in making those projections, then we say uh, it suffices uh, to take uh, a modeling approach or a study using uh, a PDE. Okay, and of course there are very many other things in the fluid dynamics. Uh, you've heard of these people doing environmental engineering, still uh, these PDEs come in handy. If you've heard of uh, uh, oil spills, we are now drilling oil in Bulisa, a uh, PDE can easily be used to uh, quantify uh, the catastrophic outcome uh, of an oil spill or explosion. Because usually when there is an explosion, and the, the explosion is toxic in nature, uh, that toxicity, eh, the movement dynamics of that toxicity is spatial. Eh? Uh, when we say spatial, spatial with S-P-A-T-I-A-L is spatial in nature, spatial meaning space. And once it is in the space, there are very many other factors that come in. Uh, there is the movement of the wind. By the way, even for flights, uh, bodies or uh, planes that are airborne, this could be a runway. The plane is supposed to land in that direction. And on the verge of hitting the runway here, a strong wind may blow from this way and it takes this plane off this would be direction and the wisest thing usually to do is for the pilot to abort the landing because if he forces the landing chances are very high that you think it crashes and the people die those are uncertainties now even those uh the 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 the, 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 the certainty and the precision in some of those movement dynamics uh is uh looked at using uh, a PDE because for an ODE you'll have to be very certain here that uh, maybe uh, it is still air here there is no wind blowing but it can blow from this way before the thing touches the ground and it, instead of going this way you find that if it forces this to land it is heading that way but this runway is designed in a certain way that averts accidents. So if it goes off that runway, or if it hits it at a certain angle, uh, that's when you'll hear people dying. That's why most of the crashes, it's usually during a landing and the takeoff. Okay, so uh, I think we've really understood uh, the applications of this. And for those of you who will advance in this area, you will be in a position to appreciate uh this okay with that said uh we can now hit the ball rolling i have explained the why or oh, i have handled i always emphasize that in my lectures my work or my main objective is to deal with the why and the, the how is the obvious now that you know the why uh, you can even go through the notes by yourselves because the why is the how is uh, those approaches uh, you go through which you can even uh, get anywhere online YouTube and other on uh, resources. So I guess we are comfortable with the 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 the, the why. Eh? Now that we are comfortable with the why, I am ready to go. Uh, into the how, and the how is where you come in with your uh, background in uh, uh, some of the concepts that can be used uh, in getting the analytical solutions to these systems. So notation-wise, 
remember when you are talking of an ODE, you use a full derivative. Uh, this is the du uh, dx. Uh, for a partial derivative, we can uh, simply write Kali u uh, Kali x. I hope we are together there. And this one is the same as if it is of uh, first order, this is the same as u x. If it is second order, that one there, and uh, uh, this one here, then this one will be u x x. If it is a third order, meaning this two is a three, and this one here is a three, then this is u x x. I hope we are together there. So if I am to rewrite this in a different notation, I can write this as uh, u x x. I hope we are together. This one will be plus u y y. And this is equal to uh, u t. Are you guys hearing me? Can I see a yes? There is this silence that uh, is a little bit scary. Uh, can you hear me? Are you there? Okay. Uh, I have got uh, uh, some yeses. This is good. At least I uh, you know uh, I'm not dealing with the, what I would call a uh, ghosty participants. Now that you are there, you can we can continue. Okay, so this is uh, the notation part of that. So that should be okay. And we are calling this the heat equation. We are going to look at the different equations. By the way, guys, I'm going to be relatively fast, please. Uh, for those who started with me, I have already uh, given you uh, the timeline that uh, we have uh, two weeks remaining of cows plus uh, the one hour we are, we are remaining with up to 10. And in the, uh, the coming week, I'll talk about PDEs. And in the last week, uh, we'll look at uh, Z transforms. The first two topics, those ones, we finished them kabisa 100%. These ones, each of them, I can cover something like uh, maybe 50% or 70%. Uh, so that uh, you, 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 you go in your uh, feet uh, to handle anything that is uh, related to what is captured in uh, this uh, curriculum of the is 2 Okay, uh, just a second. Just uh, a second. Okay, uh, guys. So we we, we can uh, uh, we can continue. Uh, uh, so uh, let us uh, continue and. Uh,
Okay, so we are done with that part. And uh, this is to do with the, this is to do with, uh, with the notation and uh, the preamble to this. The definitions here don't change, but we are going to look at uh, categorizations of these PDEs. And uh, there are actually three of them. So uh, it can be hyperbolic, it can be parabolic, and it can be elliptic. Uh, we are going to look at these conditions using what we call uh, discriminants. Uh, and uh, in that categorization, because each PDE can be categorized and each PDE uh, can perform uh, a specific task. So we are going to look at the conditions uh, that can be satisfied for a particular PDE to be quantified as either hyperbolic, parabolic, or uh, uh, elliptic. Okay. Uh, here, these are uh, definitions uh, that are to do with the variables, what is a dependent variable, what is independent variable. Uh, these ones you already know from, uh, from, 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 uh, uh, from your so-called DEs1. And uh, even from the very first concept of the equation of a straight line, when you talk of a dependent and independent, uh, probably also from your calculus one. You have X, you have a Y here. So if these are two variables, you have a Y will equal to MX uh, plus C. You know that here X is independent because if you have X values here, this is X, this is Y. Whatever the value of X is, once you throw it here, given M and C, it will give you that Y. So Y here is always uh, dependent and uh, X is uh, independent. These are two variables. The same applies with the, this one. When you talk of uh, a partial differential equation, you are saying it has uh, an unknown function, which is uh, a dependent variable, depending on at least two uh, independent variables. Is that okay? So when you have here u, and we say u is x, uh, y, a, t, okay? So u becomes, uh, u becomes dependent, uh, but uh, what does it depend on? It depends on x and y, okay? So uh, the, the X and Y in this case become uh, uh, independent, okay? So if they become independent, of course, there is a factor of time T, whatever we do uh, is uh, associated with the time. I have always defined for you time in Lehman's world as time being the flow of the now. Huh? Because between now and now, time has elapsed. If you go into microseconds, milliseconds, you have seconds. So time is always flowing, and you cannot uh, 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 pause time. You can't pause time, you can't reverse time. That's why they say never say you are wasting time. Time can't be wasted. You are wasting yourself because for time, it is always in what? In motion. So uh, here, the independent variables, it is the X and Y. When we write U, X, Y, what is this? Uh, when you write it like this, this implies that uh, this is uh, uh, Kali squared U and this is the Kali X, uh, Kali Y. So what is the variable here? Uh, here you have uh, a u, which is uh, dependent on x and y. But there is always a factor of time. Uh, whatever we do, we cannot isolate time. Is that OK? Whatever we do, because the question is, what was the duration? Eh? For any activity, duration can come into play. Is that okay? So 
time is a, 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 a one variable that can determine very many things and of course uh, time is always independent is that okay because how much time do you throw into something that gives the output you imagine if this is your performance p and this is time t then we can try to find the correlation we say if you your performance will be good if you throw in much time but there are also those people whereby the the, the correlation uh, can be negative is that okay uh, if the correlation can be negative uh, what would this be this is performance p this is time t uh, and you realize uh, the performance keeps decaying as this person uh, throws more time. You've seen people always in the library, they are always reading, I am going to read, I am going to read, but in scooping retakes, uh, you could give them an award. Yeah? So that one is also uh, another uh, problem there. Eh? Just like some of the football fans, you spend a lot of money, Manya bring Ronaldo, you do what? They hammer you 5-0 uh, in your home ground. Then uh, that is a negative correlation. Money pumped into buying players is not being translated uh, into uh, 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 what you would call uh, super, super performance. Is that okay? So here, time is also incorporated uh, into that. That's why when you talk of dependent versus independent, and now those dependent, uh, rather independent variables, there could be very many uncertainties about those uh, uh, independent variables. I think we are clear. So we've talked about the notation, uh, following the examples of uniqueness, I have already talked about this. The categorization is here, as I have already mentioned, you have the order and the degree. You know, uh, degree is, uh, is the power of the highest derivative, okay? So, and uh, the order of the PDE, uh, the highest partial derivative appearing in the equation. These definitions are the same as those of uh, the, 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 the so-called uh, uh, ODE, uh, ODEs. Uh, so uh, what is happening here is uh, in this case, you will find that uh, you don't really have to uh, dwell much uh, if, you, if you took time and uh, you understood uh, what you did in the is uh, then uh, this introductory part of the lecture really uh, it's not a big deal so the definition is remain the same what we call an order and uh, what we call uh, a degree okay uh, then linearity versus non-linearity. You are going to go through all of these definitions here. These are yours. Eh? These are not in you. Uh, when is it homogeneous? When is it non-homogeneous? Same story. Eh? So if you have a certain fx here, which is zero, homogeneous. fx not equal to zero, that is non-homogeneous. Okay, then we have the definition of uh, a degree power of the highest partial derivative. It is a key. So, uh, uh, so uh, by the way, this session is uh, soon running out in the next very few seconds. As soon as it does so, please log back uh, into the session as always using the same. Uh, uh, link which is a recurrent uh, in nature. Okay, so definition here doesn't change. Again, as uh, we defined it in the ODEs, it is the highest partial derivative uh, in, the, in the equation. So that is uh, uh, not. So.
So that means that uh, all of these examples, it is uh,